Adding an awning to your array of touring accessories allows you to increase the living space of your van, as well as providing an area for keeping outdoor kits safe from the elements. But there have been major strides in awning development in recent years, so we sent Peter Baber to find out more. Whoever described awnings as a divorce in a bag was probably onto something. If you've ever seen people try to put one up on your average caravan park. But actually, there are huge advantages in having one. They can hugely increase the space in your caravan or motorhome without you having to trade up a model. They don't necessarily have to be very heavy, because a lot of them now come with air awnings, which is an inflatable awning. And even the ones that still have poles, the poles tend to be materials like carbon fiber, which is very lightweight. They can be expensive, some cost as much as £2,000, but you could also get ones for as little as 200 So what's really good about awnings? Well, I'm no expert, but I'm here with somebody who is, Andy Harding, the manager of Sell at Leisure. So Andy, what's new in the world of awnings? Current trend is definitely moving towards the air awning. It opens up awning um, ownership and usage to a lot of people that probably would have been put off just for the convenience of using them. They have their place in the market as an easy, more convenient way for short breaks and holidays. That still doesn't rule out pole awnings, which you probably use if you are possibly going to go for a bit longer time, or if you look at a seasonal pitch, where again you go for thicker material and probably a larger pole. It's more rigid and it can cope with a longer length for the weather conditions. Is there anything else that people should consider when they're buying an awning? Um, really is what your needs are. So break it right the way down for if you're going to be using it for weekends, if you're going to be using it for seasonal or holiday use, which will narrow down a lot of the market anyway. And then it's what you're willing to put up with as far as longevity of putting it up and complications. You can make your life easier with pole awnings, for instance, by laying them out, getting the instructions out, zip all the panels out of the awning, put the roof of the panel up first, and then start building the frame inside from the instructions. And again, with the air awning, if you lay it out first, you can get a fair idea of where all the valves are before you start pulling it through the awning rail. Thanks very much, Andy. No problem at all. Well, that's easy enough for you to say, Andy, but just how simple is it to put one of these awnings together? Thankfully, we have expert Adam Hughes on hand to take us through the Suncamp Silhouette Motor Air 250 Grande. Now, the first thing to note is that the whole thing packs into this compact bag and it's also relatively lightweight at 17 kilograms. Now the air in the name indicates that it's inflatable and the Grande means that it's the big brother of the standard silhouette. Everything you need to put the awning up is already in the bag, including this dual action pump. The first job is to open out the whole awning and locate the valves to inflate the main frame. Firstly, connect the valves into place ready for pumping. Generally, you pump up the two tubes independently, but this particular model has the optional extra attached, which connects those two tubes, so you'll only need to inflate them from the one spot. At this stage, you just need to get it into a basic shape, which takes about 30 pumps, and then locate the beading that fits into the canopy of our two-lay awning. Bring the canopy down to a workable height and thread the beading into the channel making sure you have the right size as there are two sizes of beading on this canopy. Wind the canopy back in, pulling the structure towards the van. And now for the pegging. And the best place to start, according to Adam, is by pulling the awning tight, just underneath the van, so the material forms a seal along the side of the van. Now, unfortunately for us, the couriers delivered the wrong height awning for our Sprite, but Adam still made it work, thanks to a short piece of rope. Do the same on the opposite side and then move the awning into place, pulling the corners tight and pegging down the outside corners, and then continue with the other pegs. So now you have the base of the awning secured, complete with its integrated ground sheet, and it's now time to fix the canopy poles, which provide an overhang to the awning's window. These allow ventilation in, something that is extremely important with an awning. Simply thread the poles through the canopy and push through to the end stops, then do the same for the other canopies. Now it's time to fully inflate the awning. On the pump, there's a dump valve set at 7 PSI, which means you can never over-inflate the tubes. When done, just pull out the pump and screw the cap back on. 
the tubes are actually tested to 20 PSI, so even with expansion due to heat, you should still be good to go. And lastly, it's time to put the guidelines in and the job is nearly done. The very last thing to do is to pull the skirt of the awning out over the ground sheet pegs and hammer home. This awning has a fully tupped ground sheet, which means you can peg it up. But to avoid a trip hazard, you can also peg the ground sheet down, so that you can step into the awning without fear of tripping. As this is a driveway awning designed for motorhomes, there is a back door as well as a front door, so you can detach the awning from your van and leave it in situ to guard your pitch while you take your motorhome out for the day.